Lewis Hamilton is going to test a Ferrari car before the preseason testing in Bahrain. And while it was expected that he would be released from Mercedes for the Pirelli tyre test that happens after the Abu Dhabi finale, that's not going to happen. Instead, the team arranged a couple of days of testing for Hamilton, who will get to accommodate one of the cars that have been dubbed to win the championship before the upgrade started to take their toll on the car. But can Hamilton extract something out of this car that the engineers missed at that time? And if so, can it help the team build a championship-winning car in 2025? One of the most interesting and rather controversial decisions for Mercedes was to not allow Hamilton to leave Mercedes right after the last race in Abu Dhabi and do the testing with Ferrari, which, while having a pretty solid argument for not doing so, is considered a bit unsportsmanlike, considering how much he's brought to the team. Be that as it may, Vasseur and Ferrari have already prepared a test within the testing car regulations for Hamilton, and it will be with the 2022 Challenger, one with which Leclerc had a 46-point lead over Verstappen after the first three races in that season. The F175 has been poised to do great things, but under the leadership of Bonotto, everything has fallen down, and the team has been struggling to pick up the pieces ever since, with a lot of positive trajectory now being noted at the Maranello team. Fred Vasseurs opened up about this test, and when talking about it, the Frenchman was full of praise for Hamilton, as he believes that he won't need more than a couple of hours to get accommodated to what they have to offer to him, as he went on to say, I'm not sure that Hamilton needs tons of hours of acclimatization. He's experienced enough to be quick on the first day, or at least very soon. We will have one or two testing days of previous cars, plus the test in Bahrain, and that will be enough. For sure, we have part of the team already focused on 2025, on the test plan, on the communication and so, with Lewis being part of this. But when it comes to the race team, it's not on my mind. Formula One's rules allow the teams to run cars that were designed and constructed in order to comply with the technical regulations of any of the three calendar years falling immediately prior to the calendar year preceding the year of the championship. This means that Ferrari can choose a car from 2022 onwards and it's very interesting that they've chosen the car that was both successful and a failure on certain periods. But nevertheless, it's going to be a massive help and advantage for Hamilton, because he understands how important it is to accommodate yourself on time, as every car has its own flaws and its own behaviour, and the sooner you get to know them, the better it is for you. Right now, the mood and morale for Hamilton are at an all-time low with Mercedes, and as Johnny Herbert said, the seven-time world champion can't wait for Christmas to come sooner, because he's been fed up of the politics of Mercedes and the constant last-minute changes to the setup of his car that makes it undrivable all of a sudden. Throughout the Brazilian Grand Prix, Hamilton stated that this version of the car was the worst he's driven in his career. But whether or not that's been done on purpose by Mercedes, as they know that they won't deal with him anymore from 2025, is up to them and their camp to answer. Truth be told, Hamilton's decision did prevent Wall from thinking about potentially more experienced replacements for him, as the team has been forced into a direction they couldn't even imagine before the beginning of the 2024 season, promoting Antonelli so early in so competitive machinery. But with Wolf believing that he's the next Verstappen, maybe things will turn out for the better at the Silver Arrows camp. But one thing is for sure, Wolf is happy that things turn out the way they did, and when talking about it he said, I absolutely had it on my radar that Lewis would go. I just couldn't understand why he'd changed to another team before we knew if we were going to be competitive. It also didn't give me any time to react. I had to emergency call all of our partners, and I possibly missed out on negotiating with other drivers who had signed contracts a few weeks earlier, like Leclerc and Norris. But I like the situation. It helps us because it avoids the moment when we need to tell the sport's most iconic driver that we want to stop. Now, there's a very interesting situation that will have to be examined closer, because if we're to look at Leclerc's statements, the Monegasque driver is almost adamant that Ferrari will be the next world champion. Whether this has been said for the constructors or the drivers' championship, it's up to us to wait and see. But the team has made steady strides, and with the help of Hamilton, there's absolutely no reason why the team shouldn't compete at the highest level possible and win everything there is on the table to win. When talking about it, Leclerc said, It's all about us, how well we are working as a team, and the job we're doing as a team to get the world championship. I feel like we're working well. However, it's a relative sport and it all depends on how well the others are doing too. And they're doing super well for now, so I've got a lot of hard work to do in the next few years, but I believe in the project. I have to believe in the project 100%, and I'm sure that Ferrari is the next team that will be a world champion. 
we've just got to keep working. This is quite interesting because Ferrari will have a huge headache sooner rather than later. Hamilton isn't coming here to retire in peace. He's coming to fight and to win the 8th World Championship that he feels was stolen from him in 2021. Leclerc needs to understand that while he has been the chosen one from Maranello's squad, the competitiveness he's going to see from Hamilton is going to be massive. And while he embraced this challenge, it's not something that he should accept with such a smile on his face. Intra-team battles will occur more often than not, and when you have two drivers who are eager to show that they're the next champion for Ferrari after the long wait from 2007 onwards, then it's easy to understand that sparks will fly. When you have the help of the seven-time world champion in your team, it's quite hard to imagine that you're not going to succeed at first, and obviously Hamilton has driven all types of cars in his career. So while he's been criticised for being too old for the modern era, we must not forget how dominant and close to the championship he was not that long ago in 2021. There's a mission that he needs to fulfil, and Ferrari understood that better than anybody else. So while it did come as a surprise to the team that they won't have him in their camp anymore from the next season, Wolf stated that he knew this would happen from the father of the man that Hamilton is replacing in Ferrari, Carlos Sainz Jr. When talking about it, Wolf said, So I heard the bells ringing two weeks before. Yeah, the old man Sainz called me and said, this is what's happening. And then there was a few driver's dads that, who rang me up that didn't before, so I thought, okay, there's something going on here. Then I sent a text to Vasseur saying, you're taking our driver? I didn't get any response, which was very unusual for Fred. He's a good friend, so yeah, I saw it coming. Even Johnny Herbert went on to comment on the current situation in Mercedes that's looking very desperate for Hamilton. And when talking about it, the pundit said, Lewis Hamilton can't wait to get to Christmas. It's very confusing. There are times when he shows his real raw speed and then it all vanishes. How and why does that happen? That's what I don't understand. The car is a bit up and down like a yo-yo anyway, and George has similar issues. Lewis is coming to the end of his time at Mercedes and George is the future, and Antonelli is lined up for next season, so Mercedes will be favouring George, and a lot of the energy and input will be coming from him. But again, this is a brutal sport, and it goes to show that at the end of the day, no matter how important of a driver you are, it's a business-driven league, and if there's a better opportunity for you elsewhere, you'd be smart to seek it. This is why Wolf has talked about the contract that they signed with Hamilton at the beginning of 2024, stating that the 1 plus 1 conditions were anticipated from his side, as he understood that Hamilton won't be present in the team for a longer period of time. Furthermore, he said, This is a reason why we only signed a 1 plus 1 year contract. We're in a sport where cognitive sharpness is extremely important, and I believe everyone has a shelf life. So I need to look at the next generation. It's the same in football. Managers like Sir Alex Ferguson or Pep Guardiola they anticipated it in the performance of their top stars and brought in junior players that drove the team for the next years. With all of this in mind, do you think that Hamilton and Ferrari are set for a great success from 2025 onwards? And more importantly, do you think that the Maranello team will finally be back in the winning charts after quite some time? Let us know in the comments below and if you're interested in the FIA's investigation result regarding Red Bull's alleged cheating device, make sure to click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now.